Hello everyone, welcome to PSPICE tutorials. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the switching characteristics of the BJT using the Allegro PSPICE simulator. The diagram shown here is a rough sketch of the circuit I will be building and I will be using the time domain analysis for illustrating the switching characteristics. So, let us start by launching the application. I will search for CIS capture. Click on it. That will take me to the start page of the simulator. Here I will click on a new project. I will name it as BJT switching. I will make sure the type of the project is P Spice Analog or Mixed AD. I will create a location for that. So I will click on the browse here. Right. So I have created a location as well. So now I will click OK. I will create a blank project. So select on the create blank project option. Click OK. It will then take me to the schematic window. Here I will start placing the part. First click on the place part button here to enable the place part window. Then I will start by placing a BJT here and the BJT I will be using is Q2N2222 which is a NPN bipolar transistor. Click on that. Place it here. Going back to the circuit I need two resistors one across the base and another one across the collector. So let me just go back in the part window I will search for R and select R analog. I will place one across the base and the one across the collector. Then we need two supplies one across the collector to emitter which is a DC supply. So I will go here and search for VDC select VDC slash source place it here. Now coming to the other here in the circuit we have shown a DC supply but it would be much easier for illustrating the switching characteristics if this is actually a pulsed supply. So please note I will be using a pulsed supply rather than a DC supply. So go back and search for V pulse. Select V pulse slash source place it here. Now the reason why I am using a V pulse rather than a VDC is because here I can apply positive and negative voltages as well as give the values for the rise time, delay time, fall time as well as the pulse width of the scene. Right? So this is much more easier to view the simulation results and much more easier to analyze them as well as compared to that of a DC supply. That is why I am using a pulsed source voltage rather than a continuous DC voltage. Right? That is about placing the components. Let us start wiring them. Click on the place wire icon here in the draw toolbar, start connecting them. Right, I will add the ground also. So, select on place ground, select zero cap sim, place it here. Once again, enable wiring and connect your ground to the circuit. Right, so this completes the circuit construction. Now let us concentrate on giving values here. I will start by renaming the components first. Let this be renamed as RB. Let this be renamed as RC. And I will call this as VCC. And this as VB. Okay. I will rename the values as well. So, let RB be 5k, RC be 2.2k, VCC I will give it as 10 volt that is sufficient. But here coming to the pulsed voltage I have to give what is V1, V2. V1 is the base voltage, V2 is the peak voltage. So, you can either give 0 or negative values for V1. So, what I will do is I will give V1 as 0 and V2 as 5 volts. You do not have to specify V here even if it is not given the system will understand it is 5 volts. Now coming to the delay this is the amount of time B which you want to delay the pulse being appearing. So I will create a let us say 10 microsecond delay. Let the rise time be given as 3 micro please note micro is given by U. Fall time is 2 micro. And let the pulse width be 20 micro and lastly the period of the overall pulse let it be 50 micro. 
right so all the values as well as the notations are changed save the circuit let us now move on to the simulation profile so select on p spice select new simulation profile give a name i'll name it as bjt switch profile create okay a new pop up window would appear click on that here you have to select the time domain settings which is already selected so no change in that but here you have to change the reminder of the settings first of all run to time is how long you want to run the simulation i'll just run it for one period of operation which was actually decided as 50 microseconds look at the period here it is 50 so i'll set it to 50 start saving data after 0 seconds only and here the step size i'll give it as 0 0.01 microsecond so this is my simulation settings press apply press ok now before we start simulation let us place some markers i'll place two markers here both being current markers i'll connect one across the collector another one across the base now since bjt is a current control device a rise in the base current will cause an equivalent rise in the collector current indicating the transistor has turned on right having placed the markers let us run the simulation now so click on this icon which is run p spice click on this new window here which is a pop up window and right you can now see two current waveforms one is for the base current another one is actually for the collector current now Coming back to the simulation waveforms here, we in fact would require a little more number of waveforms. As you can see here, we want four waveforms. The first waveform I'll concentrate is on the voltage across base to emitter junction, then the base current, then I'll go for collector current and lastly collector to emitter voltage. So this is the order in which I'll be placing the waveforms. So go back to the schematic, go to plot, select on add plot to window. You can see another plot is added. So do the same two more times to get four plots. Right now click on the first plot. This you can identify by looking into this select icon. Go to trace, add trace. Here I want to add VBE. Eliminate the alias names. Click on VQ1B. But this is only the voltage across the base terminal. You want to modify the expression. So here in the trace expression, go inside the bracket, put a comma write q1 colon e so it is now base to emitter voltage so press ok you can see the base to emitter voltage has appeared here now coming to the second graph here i will place base current but base current is already given here so simply click on the base current icon here control x control v then i want the voltage across the collector to emitter so select on this plot go to trace add trace now you have to click on VQ1C, but again this is only voltage at the collector terminal. I want voltage across the collector to emitter. So modify the expression by introducing comma Q1 colon E. Press OK here. So you will now see voltage across the collector to emitter terminal also appears. And lastly we have the collector current as well. So all the waveforms what we expected are now being plotted. Let us now eliminate the grid lines here because it's too clumsy and not properly visible. Uh, but I'll start by thickening the plots first. Right now, I will remove the grid lines as well. okay so now we have obtained the plot for this is our base to emitter voltage you can label it it's already there but this is actually with respect to terminal so what i will do i'll place some text labels i want v underscore be to appear here and i'll make changes to the font style and case i'll make it appear as black i'll select it as bold make the font size as 14 press ok and place it here Please note, before you mark any text label, you should have already selected that graph. Okay, So it is not possible to select this graph and then place a text label here. That is not possible. Now I will place text labels for the rest of the graphs. Right. So now I have placed the text labels. 
you can save this plot by simply clicking on the print icon here and you can save wherever you want. Coming back to the waveforms here, if you look at this particular waveform for the collector current, you can see we have specified multiple timestamps. We have delay time, rise time, on period, storage time, fall time and lastly off period. So now I will try to make these measurements. So go back to the simulation window. Now to make those measurements, I do not want the voltage across VBE. So select on this plot, remove that plot. And lastly, select on VCE as well, remove that plot. Now, the reason because I have eliminated the previous two plots is to simply make sure I have enough space for marking all the timestamps here. Now, since the base current is negative here, but the collector current is never negative, I will change the axis settings for the collector current. So, click on this graph, go to plot, select axis settings select y axis, change the data range from auto to user and let me just range it from minus 1 milli to plus 5 milli. So, press ok. Now, this is a lot more fine. Now, let us start by enabling the cursor. So, click on the toggle cursor icon. I want the time instant from which a positive voltage was applied across the base which we can identify from these settings also. Please note, we create a pulse after 10 seconds of the operation. So, coming back to the simulation window, 10 microseconds is the instant at which the base pulse is applied and from that instant till the collector current becomes 0.1 value of ICS is the delay time which we have marked here as TD. So, first and foremost, we will identify what is the ICS value which is a steady state current. So, now I will click on this window then I will enable the cursor, then I will click on this particular instant and coming back to the cursor window, what is the Y value IC of Q1 is 4.533. This is the collector current which is ICS, I will create a text label for that. So, I underscore CS equals 4.533 milliamps. I will place it here, then I will start finding the delay time which is the time difference between the application of the base voltage till 0.1 ICS. So, I will place a marker beginning at here. I will note down what is the value of time at this particular point. Then somewhere here will be 0.1 ICS. So, the delay time is the time difference between the application of the base current and the instant at which the collector current becomes equals to 0.1 ICS. So, this difference will be marked as delay time. So, if you look at this particular cursor here, it is currently pointing at 10.577 micro and the base voltage is applied at 10 micro and therefore, the delay time is 0.577 micro and I will now create a text label for that. So, T underscore D equals 0.577 microseconds. Right, let us now continue to find what is the rise time. It is from 0.1 ICS to 0.9 ICS. So, we just found out 0.1 ICS is 10.577. So, 0.9 ICS will appear somewhere here. So, if you look at this particular point, this is 10.91. So, the difference between 10.91 and 10.577 will be the value of the rise time. After calculation, I find it to be 0 0.341 micro and I will once again create a text label for that. Okay. Now, after that, let us move on to the saturation and fall time. Saturation time is actually the instant at which we apply a negative base voltage, but still the collector current continues to be on the on state that is above 0 0.9 ICS. So, when I come back to the schematic here, please note we started the pulse at 10 microsecond and the duration of the pulse was 20 microsecond. So, at 30 microsecond, we have made the base voltage 0. So, 30 microseconds is our point here. So, I go back. This is the instant at which a negative base voltage is applied and the collector current continues to be positive and above 0.9 ICS till somewhere around this particular point. So, from this point to this point is the saturation time. 
So since this particular point exactly lies on 35 microsecond, I'll create a text label for the storage time as 5 microseconds. Lastly, we move on to the final timestamp, which is the fall time. It is the time difference from 0.9 ICS to 0.1 ICS. So I'll just continue my time frame. So currently I was at 35 micro and somewhere here it will become 0.1 ICS. So this instant you see 35.273 is the instant where it becomes 0.1 ICS. So difference between this instant and 35 micro will be the fall time. So once again create a text label, this is for fall time and this obviously is equals to 0 0.273 microseconds. Right, so that is how you will be obtaining the values for all the different timestamps in the switching characteristics of a BJT. So once again I am going to finally save this plot, I will call it as switching waveform times. Right, so now we have constructed the circuit, we created a simulation profile as well as we obtained the waveforms and lastly we computed the values for all the timestamps in the switching characteristics waveform. So yes, so that is how you simulate the switching characteristics of a BJT in Allegro p -Spice. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on p tutorials. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.